Welcome to the Craig and Greg Show, presented by Maximize Leadership. Here are Craig Owens and Greg Harris. Hey, this is the Craig and Greg Show. I'm Craig. This is Greg. We are really glad that you're here. We're starting a brand new year. Are you feeling good? I'm feeling really healthy. Good. Well, I like the fact that you're feeling healthy because I had, that's what I had, we I had a raisin today. brand today. <laughs> well, that's not the kind of health we want to really talk well, about. I don't right know now, where we're going to go. So here is here's my thought on something. Um, I, if you go and read in the Bible the books of Luke and Acts, written by one guy, um, and he is uh, Luke is a premier historian. Mm. He records things so accurately. And so uh, even like the, the order that he lists things, it sh- tell an importance of why he's listing it this way. So he sums up everything from Jesus's life at age 12 all the way to age 30 in just one verse. He says, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, and in favor with men. Mm-hmm. So I see their mental growth. Mm. I see physical growth. I see spiritual growth, and I see the emotional, social kind of growth. Mm. It's important that we're healthy in all of those areas. Mm. What happens if we're not healthy in one of those areas? They all they affect everything for the leader. And you know, many of you probably have stories. I I can attest. If you take your eye off the ball as a leader, and uh, you let something go, it affects all aspects yep. of your leadership and influence and relationships. Um, I think it's one of the traps. Now, the social media is so easy because you can get news and get commentary and so forth and opinions. Um, there's three aspects of conversation. The lowest aspect is you and I talking about people. Sure. The second intermediate aspect of communication or, or learning or, or conversation is about things. And the highest one is about events, causes, issues. It's very difficult for us leaders to be healthy with our mind. That was the first one, right? If we're allowing people gossip conversations in versus really shooting for the stars, like where can we be? Where should we be talking? So I think that's one is to guard your mouth and what you ingest, absolutely. You know, to be well, healthy. If if you only have garbage <laughs> coming into your mind, what what are you and I going to talk about? Well, I mean, if that's all I'm listening to, right? Wh- where's our conversation going to go? And that kind of that, that guard your health, right. uh, kind of what goes in d- does come out. Absolutely. I mean, my my grandparents, you know, hammered that idea home: is whatever you put in comes back garbage out. Garbage in, and, garbage out. And that has yeah. biblical, you know, uh, biblical yeah. connotations as well as just you know human. Man kind just on earth. Right. And I think the, the guarding what you allow in and maybe what you allow out, because people will tell you your influence is based on how you speak too. Yes. So if I'm speaking about people, uh, they're not going to be too thrilled. Like, well, I'm not, if I'm not around, is he talking about me? Sure. And, uh, and I think it's fun to find them. I mean, you've, you, you and I have had that relationship for a long time. It's one thing to catch up. And it's important, you know, how are your kids and tell me about this or that or your your mom's health or, you know, tell me about your vacation. At the same juncture, you know, when iron sharpens iron, that's what we enjoy doing for each other and others. Boy, you get to a whole new level. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But I find it very interesting, too, that the way that Luke lists those, that what he's really saying, and I find this interesting because this is Luke talking about Jesus, that he says that the pinnacle, the ultimate growth, so he starts off with, the mental, then mm. the spiritual, mm. and the or, or the physical, then the spiritual, but the emotional and the social, social is yeah. the highest one. Because really, when when the rubber meets the road, isn't that where my interaction with you, or as leaders, our interaction with the people that we're working with, that's ultimately where my health is going to show. It's going to be really mm. hard for me to be socially and emotionally healthy if I'm not putting good stuff in here if my Mm. spiritual health is lacking, if my physical health is lacking, because, hey, I'll be honest, um, if I'm tired, what's my patience level going to be like if I'm working with somebody that is struggling with an issue? I'm probably not going to have a lot of patience with them. Right. I'm probably not going to have a lot of creative uh, thoughts with them just because I'm physically tired. Right. Yeah, the, the, the pace of play... That's, I, I love that word, although for some golfers, they're like, yeah, they're always slow on Saturdays or whatever. Or there's a league in front of us or something. But I think pace of play is kind of sneaky to us leaders. Mm-hmm. 
um, we all of a sudden find out, my goodness, my dress shoes are burning up because I've been running everywhere. Or my, you know, my uh, phone is just, you know, in my hand is hot. Oh my gosh, I've had 74 emails this morning. And I think it's easy to get distracted about taking care of yourself. And it, it feels a little selfish. And maybe that's something yes. that we can share, you know, with the audience, Craig, you know, to take care of self feels selfish for some people. And I mean, the moms and dads can attest to it, but even right. leadership in a business or at a church or a school, how does selfishness get broken so that we can actually invest? Well, first of all, self-care is never selfish. True. So if, if I'm taking care say, of my... Say, say that again to the camera. Self-care yes. is never selfish. Love it. Because again... It's kind of like if if you're traveling on a plane and they're giving all those instructions, they say, if the oxygen mask falls down and you're traveling with the child, put yours on first. Yeah. Well, well, why? Because if I pass out, I'm no good to that child I'm traveling with. Right. It's the same thing. If I don't take time to make sure that I'm uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally mm. healthy, I have nothing to give you. In fact, yeah. what I'm going to bring you is probably toxic. Yeah. It's going to pull you down. It's not going to be iron sharpening iron. It's not going right. to help pull you up. So I have to take care of myself mm -hmm. or why am I trying to invest in anybody? And I think especially leaders yeah. really have to make sure because there's a lot of people that are following your example. They're following yeah. you know the pace that you're setting for them. Speaking of pace, I think uh, I was reading a Psychology Today article about the contributors to a healthy leader mm -hmm. or the distractors of a health leader. Mm -hmm. And one was the amount of stress. Mm -hmm. So as you kind of put those, uh, as Luke wrote in Luke and, and Acts, the um, four or five pyramid pieces, you know, from mind to so forth, when you get up in that physical, the spiritual, the emotional, relational, when you're stressed, it's very difficult to be patient and kind and gracious to people. And we, we need to be more self-aware yes. as leaders. I think yep. that's a missing uh, trait. Uh, I think it's probably a habit, not a talent, to be self-aware. Like, yeah, I, I probably came off a little bit fast. And I got, well, my, my heart's going fast. And so my influence is fast and it doesn't stay. Right. Well, um, but I, we go to a doctor, like, you know, you'll go and you get your annual checkup. And then they say, you know, here's your test results. And you look at it and go, oh, my cholesterol is a little high. I need to make an adjustment there. Or right. some people might even just go, wow, I got winded running up those, <laughs> right. those steps. Right. I need to work on. But what do you what do you do for the other areas? Because it's not it doesn't seem quite as tangible or quite as measurable as like, let me check my pulse. Right. You know. Um, how, how do you how do you know whether you are healthy or are unhealthy in the area of say your mental growth or your spiritual growth or how, how how would you how would you know? I think as a leader, it ties into some coaching. Mm -hmm. But as a leader, you probably need to ask some others who will be honest with you. That's tough, isn't it? It's tough because you're you're kind of exposing. Hey, did I handle that meeting? Yep. Well, boss, not not the best. You know, he, uh, you know, fellow associate that was really poorly handled or communicated. And I think that's helpful that yep. if you're open, you know, to being coached by another leader and their experience with you in, in your space, yep. it re really is good. It's tough enough to think about looking in the mirror and saying, I'm self-aware. I think I handled that poorly. The other thing is to be open if someone points it out. Yeah. I, I um, There's a proverb that says wounds from a friend can be trusted. Mm. but an enemy just multiplies kisses. Yeah, you, you know, somebody that doesn't really care about you, they'll just be like, you're fine, you're good, it's okay, it's fine, yeah. it's fine. But somebody that loves you enough to say, mm, I don't think that was your best. Yeah, I, I, I think that maybe you should reevaluate that. But then we have to, we actually have to do something with it, right? I mean, you, you talk a lot about people getting stuck in ruts. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes people, if somebody really loves you, they'll point out, you're in this rut. You actually, they can't get you no, out of the rut. No. You have to get you out of the rut. And I think for me, and I've, I've been in ruts before, um, they're comfortable. Oh, sure. But as the rut continues, I go less less speed and less distance because I'm in a rut. Yeah. Eventually, potentially, you could get stuck. Oh, no. no. And, and I think the challenge for ruts for most people is they don't realize it until they look back and think, 
that is a long rut. How long I've been doing this? And that's partly the challenge with leaders is we've, we don't like a lot of change, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then also I think the rut is it, it's, it's the path of least resistance because to get out of the rut takes so much energy. Yes. Interesting. I'm going to ask you about this. My, uh, I, I, I do some physical training one of, one of the first pieces to stay healthy. And one of my trainers, his name is Noah, I'll reach out to you, Noah. And he goes, Hey, Greg, you need to hydrate more. And I thought, well, that's great. But if you travel a lot, I don't want to use the boys room a lot. Right. So I'm going to cut down on the water or you're busy and you, know, you kind of forget about hydration. Yep. And one of the articles that I did some reading on to, re- to research our, t- our today's episode is I'm the dehydration of a leader. Mm-hmm. And what contributes to that? So that's, I'm on fumes, right? I, I, I'm not giving living water to other people anymore. In fact, I'm not even hydrated myself. And it's such a sneaky uh, result. Yep. And it's very difficult to figure out, I got to stop some margin and then start to hydrate because I'm, I'm a dry leader. Yep. Want to speak to maybe you've, you've seen that before as a leader. Oh, well, I mean, not only seen it, experienced it myself right, where, right. where you just like, you're, why am I snapping at people for the smallest things? Why, why are they getting on my nerves? And, mm. you know, but again, that goes back to that being self-aware. I love that. You know, and unfortunately it's a psychological principle that's true. They say most people won't change until the pain of staying the same becomes greater really? than the pain of changing. Yeah. So I think that maybe we should pause right here. We, we want to talk about um, setting goals in all mm. of these areas, whether it's the, the, your mental growth, your physical health, your spiritual health, your uh, emotional health. Um, we, we got to be able to set some goals, some benchmarks. And so we're going to pause here and, and pick that up with our next episode, but we'd love for you to be able to uh, dialogue with us. And, uh, we do have a contest going on. If, if you, uh, put a comment on our YouTube video or you, uh, send a, uh, a message to us on Twitter at maximize podcast, we're going to put you in the drawing to win a wonderful prize. Um, uh, as we, uh, if we will pull your name out, but we want to be able to hear from you and you say, Hey, I'm struggling in this area. Or um, could you guys talk a little bit more about this? Um, you could even tell us, I totally disagree with that, that part that you just said. Or, hey, uh, I say uh, amen to that part. That was, <laughs> that was very helpful. We'd love to hear that kind of stuff. So uh, be sure that you dialogue with us. Follow our website as well at MaximizeLeadership.com. And uh, we'll give you some more content there as well. So come back next time where we're going to talk about setting some goals to help us stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Get in touch with Craig and Greg through Twitter at Maximize Podcast or at MaximizeLeadership.com. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of The Craig and Greg Show.